ESG, Megan, why is this so important for investors? ESG is really about taking what companies were already doing or should have already been doing, which is really being a good corporate citizen and adding in greater transparency and greater accountability. We want to deliver results, but we want to do it the right way. And ESG is really how are we doing what we're doing, right? Are we doing it in a responsible way? Are we doing it in a sustainable way? Are we doing it in an ethical way? And are we doing it in a way that's doing right by our customers, by our investors, and by our employees? And how will it translate into shareholder returns going forwards? It really is about being an employer of choice for employees. It's about being um, the provider of choice and the logistics provider of choice for our customers. And it's about making sure that we're adding value. We want to be the kind of company that customers want to work with and that employees want to work for. And I think ESG is what gets us there. And do customers come to us for our ESG benefits? Our solutions team is able to say to our customers, we have solutions for you that maybe you didn't think of before. Here is how we can deliver greater value. Here's how we get you lead certified. Here's how we make you and us an employer of choice. Here's all the value that we can bring because we have that data and we do crunch those numbers and we can provide those solutions that maybe customers didn't think of before. And on that data side, what KPIs do we look at to want to lead the way in ESG? Well, they're myriad. There's a lot of them. Uh, we have a lot of KPIs we look at in terms of emissions, sustainability, carbon footprint on the sustainability side. We have a lot of metrics we look at in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion, what our labor population looks like. And then we have a lot of metrics that we look at in terms of corporate governance, in terms of how we're doing for shareholder value, how we're doing for our board, our board diversity, our board skills. Uh, and then are also our own compliance management in terms of what we're hearing from our population and how we react to concerns that are raised. Megan, let's talk a little bit about the environmental side. Clearly, mm -hmm. in a world of reverse logistics, there's a lot of waste in the system. Mm -hmm. What are we doing to help the environment? The E of ESG is how are we interacting with our planet? And we're constantly looking at new ways to how are we more sustainable? How do we manage this more sustainability in terms of deforestation issues, in terms of emissions issues, in terms of water management issues? Um, and reverse logistics is becoming, right, as, as we all know, even as consumers ourselves, more and more of an issue. Um, and so it's something that certainly we're focusing on. What are new ways and new solutions for us to reduce waste in that process? What are we doing to lead the way on the social side of ESG? So the S, the social part of ESG, is really how do we interact with our communities and how do we interact with our employees? So it's wide ranging and all encompassing. I would say that the S is sort of the broadest and most amorphous component of ESG and in many ways the most important. Um, so it's how do we work with our own employee base? What do we focus on in terms of recruitment, in terms of diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging? Um, what do we focus on in terms of once employees are employees, uh, in terms of things like pay, benefits, working conditions. We have an incredibly strong safety record, uh, which is incredibly important to really have a safe working environment for all of our employees. Uh, it's in terms of how we interact with our communities at large. Um, how we interact in terms of uh, charitable programs, social programs, a lot of work that we do even with local governments for things like disaster relief in terms of COVID and natural disasters. Uh, and then it's also in terms of our employees themselves, what are their opportunities for career advancement? Um, and then how do we manage issues that arise? Uh, we have very strong programs and policies in terms of making sure we have a positive working environment, preventing workplace harassment, workplace discrimination, and then managing employee concerns or complaints as they might arise. Tell us more about how GXO is leading the way on the G, on the governance side. On the G, on the governance side. And I think the G is sort of the trickiest one sometimes. I'm an attorney by trade, so the G makes sense to me. It doesn't make sense to everyone. Um, the G is really, are you buttoned up from a corporate governance perspective? Um, this is the one that I think shareholders really should be focused on, and investors should really be focused on. We're very strong on the G. I'm a little bit biased because I'm also in charge of compliance, <laughs> um, but we're very strong on the G. We have very strong corporate governance. We have an incredibly diverse and incredibly experienced board who's very involved and very focused on, on all issues, including ESG issues. Um, we have very strong policies when it comes to uh, legal issues, compliance issues, making sure that we're fully buttoned up on all of those points. Um, we're making sure that all of our leaders do the same thing. Megan, thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely.